Hello, NG Houston. Uh, I am really excited to be back, and I know it's uh, totally different this time, but uh, so YouTube changed how they did things, and so we had to change how we're doing things. Luckily, I have a new co-host, Bjorn. Uh, say hi, Bjorn. Hi, NG Houston. I'm Bjorn. I'm from the Netherlands, and I'll be and co-hosting with Bonnie. <laughs> I'm very glad that I made friends with Bjorn when I did, because then YouTube changed all this stuff, and I don't know that much about streaming, but he does, so, uh, so it's good to have friends. So thank you very much, Bjorn, for joining uh, and tonight we have an awesome guest that I'm very excited about, uh, Zama. Zama, say hello. Hi, guys. Hi, Bonnie and Bon. Hello, Zama. So I actually met Zama when uh, we didn't know what we uh, we were doing your GDE interview, which you right, did. Right. You did make it to GDE, so congratulations on that, which I think is well deserved. So uh, I was really happy to uh, to meet you. And then while while we were talking through the GDE interview, and you were talking about some of the stuff that you were doing in the community. And I was like, hey, you should come on NG Houston and teach us some cool stuff. Uh, and right. here you are. So thank yeah, you just so to, much. Uh, just to correct that, I actually cleared your interview, but I wasn't able to clear the next round. So I'm not an official GD, but yes, I'm going to try it next time and get that GD badge for sure. I think you're going to make it. I think it's just a matter of time because uh, you. I think you would be a great GD and you would be an asset to the program. So uh, you just have to reapply. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm excited so, about that. So you're going to teach us, what are you going to teach us today? So today we are going to go into code splitting in Angular. Like we are going into depth of not just route-based code splitting, but also something like component-based uh, code splitting, which is going to be exciting. This is awesome. And so th is this going to be OK for beginners, or is this like advanced? Uh, this is going to be like advanced in between, but then once I use my library that I created called NGX Loadable, it's going to be for ev anyone, any beginner. So, yeah. All right. And why would we want to do some code splitting in the first place? So there are a lot of use cases where, uh, suppose you're creating a dashboard where you have dynamic widgets that uh, have to come on the screen on your particular route. And if you have 50 different widgets, you, you can't just load all of those components uh, in one particular route. That would be really, uh, that would slow your page load by a lot. So just by using code splitting, you can actually reduce the number of uh, JavaScript that you are requesting. And I think that would be really interesting to see and uh, implement. All right. I'm curious. I love it. Yeah. Can we see it? Yeah, I, I will go, we, with, we go into it? more. Show us. Yeah, sure. I, I will go into more use cases of code splitting in my presentation. All right. Are you ready? You want to just jump right in? Yes, yes. All right. Let's, let me share my screen. Cool. So can you guys see, see my screen? Yes. I can't see a screen yet, but I think that's a, a setting on your end, Bunny. Uh, oh, yes, because I need to add his screen. There you are. Look yeah. at that. I got this. Thanks, Bjorn. Cool. You're welcome. So you guys are able to see my slides? Yes, we can. Right? Uh, cool. Yes, go for it, man. Yeah. All yours. So today we are going to speak about code splitting. And code splitting is really amazing uh, when it comes to any uh, single page applications, whether it be in Angular or React. It's really important for us to do. And we will learn about different techniques in this presentation. Uh, my name is Zama Khan Muhammad. I'm a software architect. And you can find my, uh, the slides for this presentation at bit.ly uh, ng code splitting. So something about me, I'm a software architect at uh, Texanet, and I normally work on Angular, React, and AWS. And I'm open source contributor, contributed to a lot of different open source libraries, especially Angular modules like Codelizer, uh, NGX Formly, uh, NGX Loadable, which we are going to cover in this presentation and a lot more. And I'm also an ng-conf champion, where I get to write a different blog post for ng-conf blog, uh, which is on Medium. And I recently also authored a book 
called Angular Projects, which is already published. And you can go and buy it on angularprojects.com. It covers a lot of different tooling from Angular ecosystem. It covers more than 35 tools. And it gives you a very good picture about how you can use that, them in your projects. I really okay. like that, so, by the way. Go back to that book, because I was looking at that, and it's a, such a cool idea. You build nine real world applications. So it's you're basically building the same thing in a couple different ways. So you can like compare them. Right. So so I begin with like a simple Angular application so that a beginner can come into and use Angular. And then I go into things like server side rendering. I go into PWA and uh, Universal. And I go into native script, Ionic, and different kind of projects that you can create and different libraries that you can utilize from the ecosystem and create like a, you know wonderful application using this all rich uh, angular ecosystem and you have like code demos and and like example sample code and stuff like that yeah it's filled with steps so it, it actually takes you from scratch to creating the whole application and show you how you can actually improve like suppose if you are creating a universal application it also shows you how you can improve the search engine optimization and also uh, how you can share them on twitter and other platforms in a very efficient manner wow that's very cool how'd you get it in one book nice <laughs> yeah, and along when I was writing this book, my wife was also expecting. So we, we had a son uh, when I was writing this book. So yeah, that was also exciting to have uh, to write a book when uh, you have your wife expecting and all the different <laughs> things going on. Around. It's like two babies. Except <laughs> yeah. I don't think uh, yeah. that your wife would probably appreciate that comparison. <laughs> it's not the same. But I can yeah. see how you have like your, you know, yeah. It's amazing. It's cool. Right. So, has, so your wife had the baby? What is it? Your wife had the baby? Yes, yes, we had a baby and uh, yeah, it's 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 exciting like this is this is my first baby so yeah, having a lot of fun with him and uh yeah, it's 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 really great. That's so great. Okay, I know we we want to get into this because we have people watching that want to see this awesome code splitting, but if we have time at the end, I really want pictures of that baby. <laughs> sure, sure. I think I already tweeted. You can actually go to my Twitter and uh, look at it, but I will share it with you for sure. I will. I will so, go yeah, so let's go it. ahead. Uh, <laughs> sure. So uh, let's talk about what this talk is. So as I said, it's going to dis it, it's going to cover like different code, uh, code splitting strategies. And especially uh, this talk is also about uh, the pitch about my library that I created called Loadable. And it's going to make code splitting much easier. And um, and you're going to see that. I'm just, just going to show that. Let's get started. So why uh, why 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 is architecting uh, sparse so much fun, right? Like we create components, we create routes, we we configure all these things, and we love creating it, right? And it's fun. But it's fun as long as we are you know, targeting desktops and high-end uh, devices as well as good network speeds. And it works fine in those kind of environments if we don't, you know, if we give all of our code for all of our routes in one particular bundle. But then when it comes to low bandwidth devices or when your network uh, is really low or when you're traveling on a train, what you see is that it doesn't work out and the user experience actually affects a lot. And the, nowadays, if you use your mobiles on train, you will have to wait for like 10 seconds for the page to load and that is a very bad user experience. So how can we improve that? So what we can do is what we can take the JavaScript, which is the most expensive resource when loading the page and divide it into bundles and load it when it's required. So you can think it as like a, uh, the obese person should only eat one slice or uh, the least amount of slices to be healthy. <laughs> so the code splitting can be in two different levels. So one is route uh, level code splitting where you just split your bundles based on the different routes. And if you want to go ahead and be more aggressive, you can also add something called component level code spl splitting. This would be uh, done by making different conditions in the application and loading component, uh, loading components and logic whenever, whenever it's required. So we'll just look into how route level code splitting is done and what are the advantages of doing that. 
next. So we know that route level code splitting is simpler out of the box. Ang uh, Angular gives, makes it very simple. Simple Angular router supports, uh, you know, code splitting, and everything works out very smoothly when you when you talk about route level code splitting in Angular. It also does maximum bundle size reduction because your pages have more logic. So once you split all the pages, then your main bundle will get smaller and smaller. So it's it's really important for us to make sure that we actually code split all our routes and make sure that all, all of them are code splitted because it's going to give you maximum performance and maximum uh, you know, re reduction in the bundle size. And also, when when you create a lot of different bundles, you have to be you know uh, aware that there could be code duplication in the bundles, and that's why you need to use something like shade module for you know sharing a, a set of modules or components within your whole application, and not duplicate those code in multiple bundles, which would be really bad. So, in route level code splitting or any code splitting, you should be aware that code splitting should be at the minimal. So let's see how. Uh, Code splitting is actually implemented. So this is this is the code which doesn't have co code splitting. So what we are doing is in our route configuration, we are just importing the components and uh, assigning that them to the paths. What is, this is going to do is when you have an import statement, it's going to download that code into the main bundle and bring that as a whole bundle, and the, the size will increase. So Angular Router actually makes it very simple to configure code splitting by just adding this magic string in versions, you know, eight minus so or whatever, like before pre version eight, you could just add this magic string and it's it's really magic. Like you just add a string which has a route in the first, like if you see it has a route in the first part of the string and then it has a hash and then you have the module name at the end. So what this is going to do is it's gonna basically download this route and also get the jobs module. In version nine, version eight plus and version nine, you can actually not use magic string because magic string is something like, okay, we know that when you are using magic string, Angular CLI is doing some magic in the background, but when you are using something like import, which is actually supported in all the browsers in the modern browsers currently, uh, it's going to, automatically do it for us and Webpack understands the dynamic import statement. So this is much better, uh, you know, way of code splitting. But let's let's look at it. It's not just one particular change that we had to do. If you see, we were importing jobs component, but now we are importing jobs module. We are dynamically importing jobs module. So what we had to do in order to get this was we had to create a jobs module. We also had to create a jobs routing module and then also update our app module. So there's still work out there, but Angular CLI makes it much easier by just using one command. So if you if you are in habit of doing multiple commands, running multiple commands, I would suggest to move to Angular 8.3 where uh, this one command would help you in you know configuring all that for you. So this was all about route level code splitting and I hope everyone uses route level code splitting in their applications. And then we have prefetching of this uh, prefetching strategies where what do you want to do? Uh, do you want to wait till you go to a particular route or do you want to download them beforehand? So there are three different strategies that normally are very famous in Angular community. One is prefetch all where you just uh, want to load all the bundles when the page gets loaded. Or you can see, you can use something like Quicklink, NGX Quicklink, where you only see, go ahead and download the bundles which are in the viewport. And then there is something advanced, which Minko actually created called Guest.js, which actually does predictive prefetching. And it uses Google Analytics and machine learning kind of stuff and basically then does uh, course, uh, prefetching, which is really, really awesome. So let's go to component level code splitting. Now, as I said, route level code splitting is very simple, but when it comes to component level code splitting, it, it lacks that simpler API as of V8. We hope that version nine, version 10, or, or something in future will make this much easier. And there are, there are talks about doing it, but, but I don't know how far they will go into implementing all the different features that are required to get component level code splitting, which we'll cover in this talk. 
And with component code splitting, what you basically get is greater, you get greater flexibility of how you can load uh, the bundles and based on what conditions. So it's, it's going to uh, you know, give you more powers in code splitting. And it, it can reduce the bundle size for a particular route that has a lot of different logic, as I in, informed in the beginning. Uh, like just for example, dashboard. Dashboard can have like 50 different widgets, and you don't want to include all the different uh, widgets in a particular route when it's not required. It also enables conditional loading. So why do we need it? Uh, it, it was a question that is really important that we need to answer. And when we are developing enterprise applications, we know that we we have so many features and we, we would use something like feature flags in order to enable and disable features rather than deploying our application every single time you want to make some changes. So this is one of the feature that is used a lot. And suppose if a user doesn't have a lot of features dis, uh, enabled, then we, we don't want to give them uh, all the modules and all the different components and slow his you know, experience. We want to make sure that if, if a user doesn't have the features enabled, then he shouldn't be, uh, you know, be uh, pen penalized for it. We have things like A-B testing, where we will show different components for, for you know, different visitors. Like we can have like testing for 50, 50% 50 users and see how much conversions we have. So in, even in this cases, we don't want both of the components to be shipped to the user and then decide which one to show. We want to make sure that we only download the bundle that is required. We have things like white labeling. This is a project that I worked where uh, if you look at them, they all look like one A line, uh, like, uh, you know, they, they all are different A lines, but the design looks similar. That's what we are doing. We created one application and served them for different A lines. So if you look, some of them doesn't, uh, some of them has this login feature, some of them doesn't have it, some of them has this VL uh, icon and some, some doesn't have it. So we don't want to penalize a new customer who comes in and who doesn't want all the features, but just want one module or one feature. So we don't want to penalize him. So that's where uh, component level code splitting will help. We also have things like dashboard, which we just described, we will have like, 50 different widgets, and we just want to download the necessary bundles rather than all of them into one particular bundle. And then we have things like responsive components. We know that we have uh, things like hamburger menu for mobiles, and then we have main menu kind of stuff for desktop, which the main menu actually takes a lot of different, uh, a lot of JavaScript logic where you have to make sure that accessibility works out and, and the whole things works out. Uh, and then you have here, I have another example where you can see on the mobile devices, it has a drop down for the state selection, whereas on the desktop, it has a very rich uh, selection uh, by using a map. Also on Google Express, you can see that for listing of products, they actually use Carousel on desktop, but for mobiles, it, it, they don't have to you know, download all the Carousel logic, it's just a vertical scroll. So, in this all use cases, we see that we can actually reduce the JavaScript that we ship to the mobile devices. And also we can actually tend to use mobile first approach in JavaScript where we can actually ship the mobile experience, uh, the mobile component by default. And then if we detect that uh, it's a desktop, then we actually serve the component, uh, desktop component necess in, if necessary. So we'll go ahead uh, and try to implement the component level code splitting without using any library. Uh, and there's a warning up there because it's going to be a bit tedious and it's it's not as straightforward as it has to be. So let's go ahead. I have two different projects here. I have a folder for loadable demo version eight and version nine is just for, I just wanted to show you with IV and without IV. So, Let's go and see how it can be done in version eight. So what I have here, if, uh, if I show you my app component, it's just, uh, there's a simple heading there, uh, just with pre-IV. And let's go ahead and run our steps. So the first thing that we need is a module, which we want to lazy load. So we'll do ng generate module lazy. Let's call the component as lazy because 
we are doing lazy loading, so why not lazy? And let's go and create a component called lazy. Now, it should also update the lazy module with the lazy component. Let's go back and check our code. So we have our lazy component. We have a lazy module. Our components is being declared. The next step would be to go ahead and so our module can have multiple components in the declaration. So we want to tell this module that, OK, we want to bootstrap a particular uh, component. So let's go ahead and say bootstrap lazy component. So this will make sure that we, we are able to select a particular component from all the different list of components in this module. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and make sure, like let, let's, let's actually run ng-surf now and see if our module that we created, does it actually comes into the bundle? Like it does it code split it automatically? Does Angular CLI know whether this bundle exists and it should code split? So what we should see is once this finishes is that it actually doesn't create a lazy loaded bundle. In order for Angular CLI to know that the bundle exists, we have to go ahead and configure something in Angular JSON file. So let's go ahead and make some changes in Angular JSON and say lazy modules. And let's give uh, the path, which should be the path for the lazy module. And now when I save it and compile it again, because Angular CLI doesn't uh, update, checks the JSON changes. So we just need to change or run it again. So now when it runs, it should actually create a lazy bundle for you. So once this finishes in a second, you see that it actually creates a lazy module. So now that we have a lazy module created using Angular CLI, let's see how we can load it in our application. To load this bundle, we need something called system.js loader. And let's import the import the loaders for us. So we need system.js ng module loader and also ng module factory loader from Angular core. And let's provide it in our uh, uh, app module. So we provide the ng module factory loader with system.js ng module factory. And if you see there's an underline here, it's because it's created in version eight. And that's why you have that underscore uh, underline there. So this is just pre-IV way of doing it. Let's go ahead and inject our loader in our component so that we can load our component. We can inject our loader. So what I'm doing is injecting ng module factory loader, and I'm also injecting the injector so that our our uh, you know lazy loaded bundle actually knows what injector to use. So here I'm, I'm creating a function called lazy load and I will have a async await over here. And what I want to do is now I want to load the bundle that I just created. So the way I can do is I can use the loader that I have and load it using the magic string. I basically have the path to the module similar to how we did it in you know, route level code splitting and have the module name here. Now, once I do this, I have the module factory. Now we need to provide module factory, uh, the injector so that we can get the module ref. So let's do module ref equals to module factory. And then we can create it and pass the, the injector to it. So what what is module ref? It's basically the module, you know, JavaScript. And it has all the information about the components uh, that it has and stuff. The next thing that we want is we want the component, right? Like we, I mean, what we just want is the the component that we need to render. So the way that we can get component is we can get it from a module ref, and we can like do component factory resolver and resolve it. But what do we want? We have we could have like ten different uh, components in our in our module. What we want a particular one, which is Bootstrap. So let's get that. We can get that from the private uh, property, which is Bootstrap components, and we need the first Bootstrap components. And you see this error, so we can get this as by using as any in TypeScript. So now 
you, you got the component reference. Now you, we have to display this component, right? The next step is to display the component. So let's go ahead and create a button, first of all, to trigger the function lazy load. And let's call the lazy load function. And then we'll also create a ng template here. This is where we want to dynamically place our content. So let's call this lazy. And then we'll get the reference of our lazy uh, local variable which we created. Let's query it by using view child. And it's, it's read as view container ref. And then what we can do is we can basically do this dot lazy. And first of all, remove this content so that it, it removes if any content exists. And then we place this dot lazy dot create component. And then we place the component here. So yeah, that's about it. Let me also go ahead and put some uh, class to my lazy loaded component so that we see. Hey, it. Zama, I'm going to jump in here for a second. Can I interrupt you? Because sure. you are doing such a good job and you are making this look so easy. And I'm just telling myself, like, I know that it didn't go that easy the first time you did this because you're just like flying through it. But uh, we had a couple people that joined uh, while you were going through this that weren't here when you started. So I just want to tell them what they missed at the beginning because your office code would look like. But when you get through this demo, you're actually going to show us an easier way to do it with the library that he wrote um, that's that's available for everyone. Uh, so I don't want anybody, because the thing is you're going through this like so quickly and it's really cool. Um, but I just want to let everybody know, you don't actually have to do all this. So don't stress because he's going to show you um, the easy much, way. much, much simpler. This is really yeah. cool. I, I, I feel like you've done this a couple of times. I was waiting for a typo because you were going so fast, and then you did typo <laughs> and then you fixed it like that fast. You're doing great. <laughs> I'm going to go back on mute. I don't want to stop you. Uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that you, cool. they don't have to remember all this. Cool, cool. Thanks for that. So now uh, I have this button. Now, if I show you the network and if I click lazy load, you should see the lazy loaded bundle got downloaded dynamically and it sh the component showed up without there being a route uh, configuration or anything. So this is great, but you saw that it, it requires a lot of different steps. And we can actually also go ahead and now see how it can be done in version nine. So what I have done here is I actually went ahead and created the lazy component and lazy module. But what I have not done is I, didn't, I don't need any system JS loader in when I'm using IV, which is great. And I also don't need any lazy modules uh, array in our Angular JSON, which is again a great point of using lazy loading. So let's let's go ahead and uh, let's see how we can use dynamic imports in, in IV. So the way you do is, is basically let me have async over here. And we, what we need is instead of the loader, we need the compiler, which is an IV compiler. And what we also need is the injector. Let's get the injector. And what we will directly use is, we'll get the module from using the import statement directly. And we'll have a wait here because it's a promise. And we can give a path here like lazy. Uh, even my VS code helps me in the path here, which is great. And we can use them and then say mod. And if you say mod will have lazy module. Now that we got our module, now the way we get the module factory, which we already did earlier in our version eight thing, is by using the compiler and we use the compile module async and we pass the module. And if you see there's async, so this means that it's a promise again. So we need to use await here. Okay, typo. Okay, cool. So the since we got our module factory now, let's go ahead and copy our module reference logic here. Yeah, cool. So yeah, that's about it. Now we don't need any system JS loader or any other different loader to load this. So next, let's run our application. Let me stop this first of all and run ng serve. Yeah. 
So this is gonna compile the application. And you should see that without we even using lazy, lazy modules array or system JS loader, just, just, uh, just simple uh, things would work. So here, lazy, if you see here, your bundle got created without you using lazy modules. And if I refresh this, now you see that it's updated with this IV and we know that it's IV bundle. Let me clear this and click lazy load and you should say it still works. Cool. So coming back to presentation. So this was a warning where I just wanted to say it's actually not simpler to do with uh, component level code splitting in Angular. And then I created this library called NGX loadable. There were a couple of different libraries also, but this was inspired from something like React Loadable where it, ha it actually enables a lot of different things which we'll go through. And this was presented by Minco in ng-conf last year. Uh, this year, actually, not last year. <laughs> and uh, he also wrote a blog post, Angular Tools for High Performance, where he mentioned about NGX Loadable. And what it actually gives, it, it actually doesn't just gives you lazy loading of non-routable Angular modules, but you can actually also lazy load unpackaged Angular elements, which is really great because it's going to give you more uh, you know, features because sometimes you will have cyclic dependencies of components, which Angular elements actually will uh, allow you to come over that. So that's going to help you. And you don't require lazy modules uh, anymore if you use NGX loadable, even if you are using Angular 6 or 7, which supports the magic string. So you can still use a magic string and use it. Uh, and you have global configuration support, similar to how Angular router has, which is really great. And uh, you can have one big configuration for all the different features and then use them in the whole application rather than uh, you know, defining each configuration every single time that you want to use it. You can also pass data to this component, which is lazy loaded. There's a preloading that comes, which is something similar that uh, that comes with Angular router. You can actually do that in uh, NGX loadable. You can preload stuff before you even show some components. You have timeout support. Suppose if if a if a bundle takes a lot of time. Uh, to show up, then you can show some timeout message and also have a reloading capability if something fails. If, if suppose you're using your application and your network goes off and then a dynamic component didn't load up, you can still reload it if, if, if required. And you have things like magic string support and uh, you have import statement support. We recently, last week, uh, we added schematic support, thanks to my friend, Ruman Hassan, who actually helped me in adding that. And we added a very great documentation uh, last week. So a lot of uh, things going on in NG NGX Loadable. So let me just go to this. So the next thing that we have is the demo for NGX Loadable. And this is the new documentation that we created. And the, it's easy easier to add, like it, it uses schematic. So now you can just run ng add NGX Loadable and run schematics to create all the different you know, code that you would require. And then you just have to use NGX loadable component like this, where you just define the module name and just tell them when to show this uh, module. So let's go ahead and uh, configure that. Let's- So let's... now you're gonna do all the same stuff that you just did, but with the library this time? Yes. This is very cool. So let me remove everything from here. So the first step is adding NGX loadable. Look at that, though. I love it when you type and it has that thing above your, I love that. <laughs> I already I had a question. Do you see that, Bjorn? Yeah, yeah, I already have a question about his technical setup, but I'll come at the end, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta, we gotta steal some of your tricks there, Zama. Sure. I don't know where you've been that I didn't know you already, but I think you're pretty cool. This is a really great presentation. We're gonna have to make you a regular on the show. Oh, thank you. That would be great. <laughs> I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely okay with me. So uh, what ng add uh, ngx loadable did is it actually installed the npm package in uh, ngx loadable, and it also updated the app module. So let's go ahead and see what changes it made. So now if I see my Angular version 8 thing, it updated my app module with it imported loadable module and it configured it, right? And it also in, installed the packages that are required, which is just ng-exploitable. Next thing is to add a 
module, which should be lazy loaded. So we need to do ng generate ngx loadable. So instead of Angular module, we are creating an ngx loadable module. And what we want to do is we want to create another uh, similar module that we created before, which is lazy. And we say we want to add it to the app module. So just by running this small command, it's going to create all the different things that were required. So if you see, it creates the lazy component, it creates a lazy module. It also goes ahead and bootstraps the lazy component in the lazy module and updates the app module. So now if I come to my application, if you see it, it went ahead and bootstrapped it, as well as if you see here in module configuration, it added the name, it added the load children property where it has the path, which has the import path to it. So now that I have, I'm done with the second step, the last step, like there's no more step to this, is to go to the component and use the ngx loadable component. And we created this module called lazy. So let's show that up and say that it should be displayed, right? And let's, let's serve this application now. And also like that's it, like now you should see that it gets lazy loaded. What I can do additionally here is have the button again for lazy loading it, lazy load. And once clicked, uh, we can have a show equals to true. And then we can just have show here dynamically. Okay, the port is being used. I can stop this and start this back. I can also create this by then. I can go to the component and add this property show. All right. You're so smooth, Zama. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like this library makes it so much easier. Like you don't need anything else, but I'm gonna show you more features that it's gonna add, add, add to your application. So did I close that? So now if I inspect it, I should have all the features that we had before. And I can click lazy and your lazy works. And if I click JS, you should see it was loaded dynamically. I can refresh it and show it to you. So it was dynamically loaded and th that should be it. So, so you see that it's, it's much easier to quick start. And the things that you can accomplish, it, you can actually go ahead and look at the examples. So this was a simple thing that we actually just saw, but you can also place a loading, uh, you know, template inside it. And once you click it, if the bundle is loading, it will show the loading message until it's loaded. Or if if the module is not there, it, it's not existing, then you can actually have a loading fail message by having the template for error. And then for something like timeout where once you click, it takes a, a time to load, you can actually show a message for timed out. And then once it's loaded, you can show that component. So that's all supported. And that, that you can configure by passing the uh, timeout and also showing the template timeout. So this is the time when it should timeout. And this is the template that it shows when it's timed out. Uh, yeah, and when it's loading, it shows the loading thing. Let's also look at some advanced configurations. So. You saw that we, we added this element config with name and load, but we can actually also configure our loading component in the configurations rather than doing it in the inline component. So we can have loading component, error component, preload, and different feature like timeout component and different things configured here. And this is for feature. So you can have a feature module doing it rather than your you know app module doing it. You can have feature modules loading this modules dynamically. You can still have other features, but the things that I want to show here, which actually got loaded, you can have things like preloading. Like once you hover on this button, it shows that it's loaded. So it doesn't have to be loaded on the click of this button. So you preload this app, this component, and then show it on when it's clicked. You also have, let me also open the inspect so that we can actually see these features. And so if I click on, Refresh this because pre breach only module actually got already downloaded. I and really I can like that preload on hover, and it happened so fast, and it was very cool. 
Right. Do it again. And <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just cool. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see what I'm doing is uh, on my component, I'm using this, uh, uh, what do you call local variable and just calling the preload method and it, it should do it. But it's not just that you can use the uh, local variable. You can actually, you have the access to the service and you can call this functions called preload all or preload all with with all the different routes uh, or modules that you want to load. So here, my I have two buttons where the first button is actually just going to load breach module. So once I click it, you see that once it's loaded, it shows this message. And once I click preload everything, you should see all the different modules, uh, lazy loaded modules uh, that were configured should load and then the preload all modules alert should show up. So these are the things that you can accomplish with using this library, which if you were to do it with your own code, then you would have to write all those logic. So this, this library is actually uh, very good at doing that. Shut so. up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and it's it's free. This is a, like open source. Anybody can use it? Yes, this, yes. I showed you the documentation for that. Uh, yeah, but I didn't know when you started how cool this was going to be and how easy this was going to be. I'm going to have to start being nicer to you, Zama. We're <laughs> friends, and you yeah. definitely should come back on the show and uh, <laughs> keep us posted on what you're working on. It's really cool to have an open source library that, like, you, what I really like about this, I mean, other than the fact, obviously, that it's cool, is the demo, um, the documentation, because sometimes there are libraries out there that don't really spend that much time on the docs, and the docs are really, I mean, other than the fact that it's colorful and actually you care about what it looks like, but it's also, I really like the the, uh, the examples in your docs. Yeah, and uh, just to uh, tell you that this button actually doesn't do anything and you know what it does, it should be doing after this talk, it's actually going to link to the NG Houston talk. Ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. My heart just melted a little bit. That's, that's, that's really fantastic. Great. That's an honor. Now we're part of the NGX loaded yeah. documentation, guys. So yeah, you made is, it, Bonnie. This is uh, all of us. We're we're part of history. We got yeah. Sean and and Connie and and uh, yeah, everybody's in everything there. <laughs> on here. This is great. We're all we're all part of this moment. That's that's great. Cool. And uh, yeah, uh, for this documentation, I actually uh, took the. Like uh, I took help from Thomas. Like I used his library ang Angular extensions elements uh, documentation, and then uh, you know just themed it to my styling and used it. And he, he actually approved me for doing it. So yeah, thanks for Thomas for allowing me to do that. Who hey, Thomas Ferguson? Thomas. Uh, what's his, his full name? Thomas. I didn't, I didn't yeah. know we had a. I only know one Thomas in the Angular community. I didn't know if there's more than one. Yeah, 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 I think you're talking about him, Thomas. I don't know his full name. Like, I don't remember his last name. Uh, Trojan. Yeah, okay. That's not Thomas Burleson. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's Tomas. Oh, yeah, well, uh, that's a beautiful, uh, that's a beautiful template. It looks really nice. Well, yeah. now we know who he is. Yes. So yeah, thanks thanks to him that he allowed me to uh, use his uh, you know documentation as a reference. Okay, so uh, we should we should stop uh, uh, telling you how great you're, you're question cutting out a little bit funny, head, so. Sama. But uh, C Connie wants to know if NGX loadable can load a uh, lazy load module with one component only. I think so. Yes. Yeah, that's what we did in the demo. But yeah, you can have. You can do that for sure. And then we also uh, put a link to uh, the GitHub repo and the website in the YouTube chat. Uh, and now, okay, do you uh, did you finish everything? Because we have more questions, but I want to I have sure two have slides, to... which oh, yeah. okay. let them finish. Let them finish first. <laughs> yes, you have to finish, and then we have questions. <laughs> yeah. So, so as we were speaking Ooh. about preloading routes, we can also use something like NGX in viewport or some other way where we can use intersection observer and know whether a particular element is in the viewport and then basically load it. This could be a preloading strategy. And then this is another one that I actually show, uh, share on Twitter where I actually use a library that I created called NGX perimeter and use preloading. So let, let, let me show the demo here for that. I don't know why. He's just not... gonna say that. It's like when the iPhone's curve uh... first came out and there was like, there's an app for that. 
And every time now we're going to say something, Zama's going to go, oh, yeah, I created There's a There's a plugin for that. Yeah, that's a library for that. <laughs> so here you see that once you come near the button, like before you come near the button, there's a boundary that I created. And it, it actually loads if your cursor comes into the boundary. But so the limitation for this is it can only be used for desktop applications and it wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to like use it on mobile application. You can still use it, but it's not going to preload your uh, bundles based on the you know cursor because there is no cursor in mobile. So yeah, those were the preloading strategies, and you know I, I would love to see. Uh, so this was a code here. Like I had the ng perimeter directive on the button and I had a padding, so you can define what padding you want around the button. Where if the cursor reaches, then call the breach module dot preload and load it. And I would like to welcome everyone to use my library and JX loadable and use it. Find bugs in it. Find the typos in the documentation. You are welcome to uh, contribute to it. You you are welcome to share ideas how we can improve it more. And I, like I have some contributors who helped me last week uh, to get this schematics working and documentation working. So thanks to every uh, every contributor. Thank you. So cool. Yeah, that's this is very cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sometimes I, I invite people to come on the show, and then it takes a couple, you know, a couple weeks or a month or two to to. Uh, and we had to reschedule because we had Angular Connect right in the middle of everything. So sometimes I forget. Um, I just see something cool, and then I book it on the show, and then I forget. And now I'm all excited again because I, I, uh, I didn't even know that the show was going to be so cool. I was getting <laughs> sleepy because it's late at night here. When well, it's not late at night, but it's you know later in the evening. But I'm wide awake now and excited because this is very cool. Uh, okay, so I, I have to say, uh, tell us, Zama, about the, because I was scrolling through looking for any last minute questions and I saw Abdul's question, which reminded me about the little pink fire thing in your terminal and you have to teach us your secrets because I just want to be as cool as you. Yeah, do you have like a dot files or something where you have like your complete, uh, your bash or Z shell, whatever you're using set up somewhere shared? So I, I normally don't use this terminal. This is called hyper terminal. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, this is like electron based, like which is a really oh, cool. Okay. Like, and there's a plugin called hyper power. So let me click on preferences and show my settings if you guys want it. Yes, we do, because it's just cool. Make a repo for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so the plugins that I'm using are Hyperpo, which is actually giving that, uh, you know, uh, oh, sorry, this comes up. When you type, you see that things are popping up. So that's Hyperpo. And then you have things like Hi Hyperborder, which actually is giving this beautiful border around the terminal. Ah, OK. So and then you, ha you have different settings here, like tab icons and other things, yeah. So we got to play with Hyper a little bit and look at all the cool plugins. <laughs> yeah. Talking oh, about yeah. plugins. Talking about plugins, I saw your VS Code that you're using Insider, but I, I have a feeling that your VS Code is working very well in, in terms of auto-importing and stuff. Are there like any plugins that you use that you would recommend? That is out of the box for me. And like, really? I, yeah. Like I, like, I really love VS Code for doing that. OK. And like, I normally in my professional work, I'm only doing React work. And it works fine for ES6 type of JavaScript as well. So yeah. OK, cool. And then maybe I need to switch to that insider mode and see what's up there. Because the default one is not as good as I see here. So that's cool. Oh, I, that's surprising. I, 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 did, I wouldn't assume that would happen on the normal version. Beside the points, we're talking about preloading here, right? So yeah. Uh, so I was. You had earlier, way early in your in your slides, you had about a lazy module part in the array in the Angular JSON. I actually don't know anything about that. Is that like a default thing that you have that you can do with Angular if you're not using your plugin? Yeah, I mean, if you are using anything before Angular version eight or um, before that, you will mm -hmm. have to have that lazy modules. Oh, okay. Array. Oh, and that's how that's how Angular knows where to split the code, basically. So you're basically signaling the compiler like this is separate from the rest. Right, right. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Cool. And my library actually uses Angular Router to like avoid doing that lazy module. So, uh, so as you are using your application, you probably when you were configuring routes and lazy routes, you never actually went ahead and used lazy modules because Angular CLI does that using uh, Angular Router module. 
so that's how I got rid of using lazy models when you are using my library. Brilliant. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just 2.5 KB. So yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's no no hurt in, in adding it to you. Won't you won't over like or exceed your budget there. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing, like once like Angular team said that they are going to create something for doing competent uh, level loading, I was just skeptical about it as like when React came with lazy loading and it created React.lazy, it actually didn't support it preloading and all that. So I don't want Angular to go into that route by supporting it and then not supporting all the different features like timeout, uh, loading, uh, you know, error message that you want to show. Yeah, I saw and all that. Yeah, all the all the full like the basically the the full full feature set you want to yeah. just offer for out of the box right there. So yeah. Even uh, React actually support lazy loading by react.lazy, but it actually recommends to use React loadable. So I want Angular, <laughs> so to, Angular to recommend Angular loadable for I see, I see. For the application. Uh, talk about the preloading strategies like timeout and and uh, you saw you showed the border and the on the, the mouse over basically you all tie them in yourself. So you basically call a dot preload or create a function to do it. Uh, you also mentioned that Angular by itself has, or you talked about a couple of strategies that they use, like the Eager, uh, but also the Guest.js, like working with with the analytics and stuff. Are you planning on doing a demo with that, or like tying it in with your plugin as well? Because I think that'd be that'd be really cool right there. So I mean, you you, you should still be using Angular Router as is and use those preloading strategies. Uh, and my my library will go ahead and. Add more features to mm -hmm. lazy loading, so I'm I'm not replacing Angular Router and its capability no, okay. of lazy loading. It's more an addition to make right. component level splitting easier than just. Right, right. I see. Okay, okay, yeah. So it's a different different area okay. of of uh, tasks then. Right. So this prefetching strategies <clears throat> are based on routing, and my prefetching strategies are based on the you know component level code splitting where when. Basically, you can say active preloading for component level code splitting, where you are running the page and then you want it to load based on uh, where your cursor is, or or you can actually also yeah. configure your routes to have a preloading array and then you know look at the events of the route and load those uh, using the service. So you have you have the APIs in NGX loadable to do uh, to to do whatever you want basically. yeah to tie it into different parts of the right. of what angular offers so you don't have to rely only merely on that uh on the component basically right okay. awesome all right good that yeah that answered my question <laughs> this is great okay uh i think we're out of time for today uh but zama i i think i speak for all of us when i say this is really great and you should absolutely come back on ng houston anytime you want to and uh, and keep us posted on what you're working on because this is really cool. Thanks, uh, thanks so, for that opportunity, Bonnie. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, join us next week, same time. We have Myra Rodriguez who has not been on the show before, but you guys are gonna love her. She's very cool, and she's also gonna teach us some really cool Angular stuff. Um, and other than that, that's it for tonight. Thank you so much, Sama, and thank you, Bjorn, and uh, thanks for everybody in the chat. Have a good night. See you next thank week. You. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. bye.